Hey, happy Friday, everybody. You made it through your first lesson. Um, so I was reading over, or I guess reviewing, your Flipgrid videos, and it's my first time using it. I don't know if it was your time, first time using it, but I think it went really well. Uh, I loved your guys' insights. And can I just start off by saying, seeing all your faces and hearing your voices really drove home how much I miss you guys right now. Um, so I hope that we get to come back to the classroom at some point before the end of the school year. If not, I don't know, I'll plan some sort of reunion or something because I need to see you guys again. And I'm going to be devastated if I have to miss out on our last day of school routine. I've got a great, great last day I do every year, some ceremony and a little pomp and circumstance. So I hope you don't miss out on that. So that's on my mind right now. I know you've got probably all sorts of other things on your mind, <clears throat> but I do need to move on to what we're doing today. Okay. Um, first of all, well done. I would like for you guys to start off today by going back into our Flipgrid and seeing um, who's replied, if anybody, to your initial videos. And if you've got some replies, please um, watch them and see how your classmates have done a great job of building on and expanding your thinking about some things. All right. Um, I just want to give a couple shout outs to some of the nice responses I really liked. Uh, it's impossible to comment on all of them, so I apologize to anybody I don't touch upon here, anybody who to whom I don't give any accolades, but you all deserve them because you have fantastic insights. But um, shout out to both Ryan and Lindsay for bringing up the symbol of the Bridge of Hesitation. It kind of smacks you in the face in the beginning of the story, especially with its capitalized um, and really clearly metaphorical kind of name. So it's it's not quite the birdcage and birds at the beginning of the awakening in terms of in-your-faceness, but it is a clear symbol at the beginning. Um, shout out to Tulsi, I think, for being the first person to bring up uh, the importance of Japanese culture in understanding where the story's conflict lies and who these characters are. Um, both Kaylee and Emily did a great job explicating the importance of the house as a possible symbol. Um, Kaylee went really in depth into the imagery to describe the house, and I love that. Sophia brought up the foils um, that Setsuko and Noriko posed as, to one another as the two daughters of Ono and the way they draw out some contrasts. Um, Aaron, in a res particularly good response to Nick, uh, did a great job of taking Nick's um, observation of honor as a theme and making a connection to another theme of conformity. So that was really great expanding of thinking. Um, and I also just want to give a quick little shout out to Carson, who identified some really cool parallels at the beginning of her response between Ono's narrative style and his occupation as an artist. So again, a lot of awesome posts. Um, but those are just a few I wanted to give shout outs to. I also wanted to um, just quickly call out, um, I think there were about six, six of you guys I haven't received any Flipgrid videos from. So um, to everybody else watching this video, if you could reach out to these classmates and just make sure that they know what's going on and that they're okay and that they um, don't need any uh, help to, to um, keep, keep up with the, the classwork. If there's any need for um, some accommodation, if you guys need any help, you guys want to tell me what's up, the six of you, please feel free to reach out to me. But I am looking at Alex and Kayla and Ashley and Nirvana, Aya and uh, Jess Rowe. I haven't received any videos from the six of you, so please get some videos up. Um, or if you need some extra assistance, please reach out to me. And classmates, please reach out to them and see if they need anything from you guys, okay? Speak a community for each other. So today, you're gonna look at replies if you have any. Just think about them, just notice them. You don't need to do anything in response. Um, I wanted to share one thing that I love about the opening of this book is actually the last page or so, um, when Ono is talking about the Pleasure District and Mrs. Kawakami's um, place. So I'm now gonna be on the, the bottom of page 26. He contrasts what the district used to be to what it is today, and he says, I'm going to read about a page here. So now that side of the street is nothing but rubble. No doubt the authorities have their plans, but it has been that way for three years. The rain collects in small puddles and grows stagnant amidst the broken brick. That image always gets me a little bit. The stagnant puddles amidst broken brick. As a consequence, Mrs. Kawakami has been obliged to put up mosquito wiring on her windows, not an effect she thinks will attract customers. Some understatement. The buildings on Mrs. Kawakami's side of the street have remained standing, but many are unoccupied. 
The properties on either side of her, for instance, have been vacant for some time, a situation which makes her uncomfortable. If she became suddenly rich, she often tells us, she would buy up those properties and expand. In the meantime, she waits for someone to move into them. She would not mind if they became bars just like hers, anything provided she no longer had to live in the midst of a graveyard. There's some striking imagery. If you were to come out of Mrs. Kawakami's as the darkness was setting in, you might feel compelled to pause a moment and gaze at that wasted expanse before you. You might still be able to make out through the gloom those heaps of broken brick and timber, and perhaps here and there, pieces of piping protruding from the ground like weeds. I feel like that alliteration is probably intentional, pieces of piping protruding. Then as you walked on past more heaps of rubble, numerous small puddles would gleam a moment as they caught in the lamplight. There's this little moment of beauty in the ruins that Ono, I think, finds maybe kind of rooted in his nostalgia for the land, I'm not sure. And if on reaching the foot of the hill which climbs up to my house, you pause at the bridge of hesitation and look back towards the remains of our old pleasure district, if the sun has not yet set completely, you may see the line of old telegraph poles still without wires to connect them, disappearing into the gloom down the route you have just come. And you may be able to make out the dark clusters of birds perched uncomfortably on the tops of the poles as though awaiting the wires along which they once line the sky. I think about those poles without wiring to connect them. There's a sense of isolation, and I wonder if there's some symbolism there too. One evening not so long ago, I was standing on that little wooden bridge and saw away in the distance two columns of smoke rising from the rubble. Perhaps it was the government workers continuing some interminably slow program, or perhaps children indulging in some delinquent game. But the sight of those columns against the sky put me in a melancholy mood. They were like pyres at some abandoned funeral. A graveyard, Mrs. Kawakami says. And when one remembers all those people who once frequented the area, one cannot help seeing it that way. There's so much death imagery here, um, but it seems to be very haunting for Ono. And it's at the foot of uh, the hill upon which his house rests. So it's very it's in close proximity to him and it's kind of his almost his territory. Or he, I think he sees it that way. So it's a really poignant way to end the chapter. And I didn't see a lot of commentary on that. So I just wanted to address what I pulled out of that page. So he goes on, I am digressing, and he moves on. Um, um, for today's reading, you're just going to read pages 28 through 40. So you're going to finish this first kind of section of the text. Um, again, you're going to the page break on page 40. The last words are, um, Setsuko would have had her own reasons for wishing to remain in the house with me. So you're ending right there. It's a pretty short reading. And one of the obvious uh, tensions in today's reading is the conflict between Western culture and traditional Japanese culture. Um, kind of a yearning nostalgia for Japanese past and a um, looking forward into um, a, a kind of a, an accommodation and assimilation of Western culture into Japan. So a couple references that you'll need to understand to get some of what's going on. On page 30, there's a reference to Lord Yoshitsune. Um, Yoshitsune was a samurai general from an epic Japanese play of the Kabuki repertoire. The play is from 1748. So 1748, not Ono's time, quite, quite before. Um, and in this epic Japanese play, Yoshitsune defeats his enemies and restores peace to Japan. So he's kind of this epic savior of Japan. And then there's another reference that you will need to understand on page 36. Um, and this is Miyamoto Musashi. Um, and Musashi was a legendary expert Japanese swordsman and ronin, okay, an expert fighter who lived around 1584 to 1645. So kind of a contemporary of Shakespeare's. Um, and so Ono makes, and some of the people make these references to really, really old throwback Japan, okay? Um, I think you'll understand the American references to, um, uh, to the phrase hi-ho silver and to the cowboy west um, and to uh, Popeye. If you don't get those, just look them up, all right? So for today, um, you're going to read those, those that small number of pages, 28 to 40, and I want you to find um, one passage. Uh, I want you to really focus on imagery and allusions um, and see if there's something that really grabs your attention, and I just want you to write about a 200-word response, okay? So just kind of a well-developed paragraph, less than a page, double-spaced MLA format, and submit that to Google Classroom. Uh, just talking, just doing a little bit of a close reading and talking about the um, importance you see in some aspect of uh, imagery, illusion, details in um, 
establishing some sort of emerging theme or conflict in the story. So just some basic commentary. Keep it short, straight to the point, and try not to spend too long on your work today. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your weekend.